Hi friends, Pastor Jesse here at Peckway Evangelical Church in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where we exist to help you know and follow Jesus. One of the ways that we do that is we both encourage you and we equip you to be in God's word daily for yourself, that it's a habit, a ritual of your life to be in the Bible, reading God's word for yourself and understanding God's word as guided by the Holy Spirit and applying it to your lives. And so what we do, one of the things that we do here, in addition to our many teaching avenues, Sunday morning sermons, obviously, is we read through a chapter of scripture a day. Right now we're in the middle of the book of Acts in Acts chapter 15, one of those foundational chapters in, in the Bible, in God's word. It's the place where the church decided, uh, as led by the Holy Spirit, where the church rooted in its heart, rooted at its core, that it is by grace, and it is through faith alone that we are saved. It's a beautiful chapter of scripture. I love every time I get to come to it, either to preach it or to teach it or to read it personally as I follow the Lord myself in my personal devotion. So I'm excited if you can open up your Bible or device to Acts chapter 15. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version or feel free to just let God's word walk, uh, hit your heart and, and change you where you need to be changed. Acts chapter 15 says, but some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers that unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no soul dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. And after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by the, my mouth and the Gentiles would hear the word of God and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, just as they will. And all the assembly fell silent. And they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with that, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and I will build the tent of David that has fallen. I will build its ruins and I will restore it, that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by their name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from of old. Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from sexual from things polluted by idols and for sexual immorality and from what has been strangled and from blood. For from ancient generations, Moses has in every city those who proclaim him, for he is ready every Sabbath in the synagogue. Then it seemed good to the apostles, the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas called Barabbas and Silas, leading them, leading men among the brothers with the following letter. The letter stated, the brothers, both the apostles and the elders to the brothers who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Cyrilia and Sicilia, send greetings. Since we have heard that some persons have gone out from us and troubled you with words unsettling your minds, although we have given them no instructions, it has seemed good to us, having come to one accord to choose men and send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same by the things by the word of the mouth. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements, that you should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourself from these things, you will do well. Farewell, stated the letter. So when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. And when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. 
Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp disagreement, so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers by the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches there. This is the word of the Lord in Acts chapter 15. And I want to point out a few things here. Here there's a sharp disagreement. There's those in the church that arose saying that you have to follow the Jewish customs to be saved, that you have to be circumcised in particular to be saved. And the debate is whether you have to follow the law in any form or fashion to be saved or whether or not it is by the complete free grace of Jesus Christ. As I just read in relation to another passage of scripture this morning, if there is anything added to Jesus Christ and his grace, then it's not grace, then it's works-based salvation. And so what the church did in unity is they came together and they worked through the agreement and they came to the right decision. They came to the right conclusion and they founded our faith as has been the case for 2,000 years now, and as it will be until the day Christ calls us home, that it is by grace alone by which we are saved. It is by our faith alone, by the grace alone of Jesus Christ that we are saved. There's nothing that we can do to earn it. There's nothing that we can do to unearn it. There's nothing that we can do to deserve it. And there's nothing that we can do to uh, uh, exclude ourselves from the grace of Jesus Christ. It is truly free. The work has truly been completed in full, not by our hand, but by Jesus Christ. And this is the foundation of the church. It gives us a great picture of the foundation of our faith. It gives us a great picture of how the church can navigate well this unity and this, this discussions in the church, but yet come away rooted in the grace and the faith of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank you for joining us today. I pray that you were encouraged in the faith. And as we seek to do here at Peckway Church, we seek to help you know and follow Jesus. And I pray as you go about this day that you will know him better from our time together and that you will follow him more perfectly in your life. Not as a way of merit, but as a way of just living out and reveling in the grace, the wonderful grace of Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day.